pushed up. The lungs become more square, the stomach is more transverse, the gallbladder is up here towards your lungs, but everything gets pushed up and to the side. You've got to be familiar with the, your patient's body when taking those x-rays. Okay. So that's body habitus. So not only are you going to be familiar with uh, thickness, but we also want body habitus is going to play an important part where you're going to direct your central ray or the center of your x-ray beam to the body part. We already talked about thickness, right? KV is generally based on body part thickness. The thicker the body part, the more KV we're going to apply. However, we also got to take into consideration the composition of what it is that we're going to x-ray. One inch thick of muscle is not the same thing as one thick inch of bone. They're both one inch, but they're both different densities. Composition. So if we're going to x-ray bone, it's going to require more x-rays, more penetrating x-rays. If it's muscle, somewhere in between, and if it's air, less penetration. You guys are following? All right, so here's an example of the chest. The chest is going to be composed of bone, air, muscle, fat. Okay, there's some fluids in there too. What else, what do we see in there? Pretty good x-ray, right? <coughs> Gunshot victim. Here's the entrance point. Broke some ribs. Boom, boom. Just missed the heart. So you got the shrapnel just sitting right there. Another example here is the abdomen. Again, same thickness, chest and abdomen. But now we have the abdomen here. Okay. We got anatomy of various similar, I'm sorry, of very similar um, composition. Muscle, fat, water, very similar in the abdomen. So this is the type of radiograph that's gonna give you various shades of grays. All right, what do we have here? You guys, need, you guys even focus on what I was saying. You guys have your eyes up on here. This entire time, right? What did I just say? What is this? What does it look like to you? Somebody left something in their pocket, right? It's a switchblade. No? Looks like a tampon. Okay, I've got that response before. Okay, but let's think about this. Anything that appears white is going to be what? very thick okay so it can either be metal or bone is tampons made of metal no Ooh, I hope not <laughs> okay but this is bone because we're looking at pelvis here but look how much more whiter it is here okay so something metal something metallic is going on in there okay um, or it could be that this piece is a lot thicker than it should be also causing it to be white Anybody want to take a stab? All right. It's an electric toothbrush. It's your handle through your bristles. And it's blurry, so it's still running. Makes sense. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it's an electric toothbrush. All right. Very durable. Yeah. All right. Any questions? Did you take that? Or is that in? Did I take that? <laughs> no, that's not me. No, I mean, we just have a collection of different types of x-rays. No, I'm not saying I know, but I'm just saying, no, no, no. That's, that's not personally not my x-ray or no. one that I That's just some of the greatest hits? Or... Yeah. Um, did I tell you about the incident with my, uh, my patient with the flashlight? Did yeah. I tell you yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Okay, same thing. <laughs> but we, we have a collection of just interesting studies. And then our students... Whenever they have an interesting study, they make a copy of the radiograph and they give them to us. And there's some really cool ones, really cool ones. All right. So that's an electric toothbrush in somebody's pocket. <laughs> All right. So then we need to be familiar with the two terms, radio-opaque and radio-lucent. Radio-opaque is anything that's difficult to penetrate, such as bone or metal. Okay. And how will they appear on your radiograph? It's going to look white or whitish. Then you have radiolucent, 
which is easy to penetrate, bless you. So then those x-rays will be penetrating those different structures and interacting with the film. It's a lot more easily penetrable, such as air and soft tissue. And how are they going to look like on your radiograph? Black or dark. Okay, either black or different shades of gray. gray. Okay. Is this making more sense, guys? All right. So radiopaque versus radiolucent. All right, pathology. It's not so much that we understand our patient's size, what part we're going to x-ray, and the composition of the part we're going to x-ray, but we also need to have knowledge of pathology. Okay? Type, size, and composition will influence the radiograph. However, getting good patient history on why they are here to get an x-ray done helps. Okay? So here's an example. I have a patient coming in for a chest x-ray. I'm going to ask him, Mr. Jones, why are you here? Well, I'm having some chest pain. Do you have any history of any type of heart or lung conditions? Yes, I have asthma. Okay, right then and then it's going to tell me, oops, I need to adjust my technical factors. Okay, because someone with asthma essentially has their, they can't get uh, air in. Okay, so their lungs, instead of it being expand, expanded, it's going to be contracted. And because everything is squished into a smaller area, am I going to increase or decrease my technical factors? Increase. What do you say? Increase, right? Because now it's more compact. More dense, right? Right, it's more dense. Now, if he were to tell me, oh, I've been a smoker for 20 years, I've got emphysema. It's the opposite. Someone who has emphysema can't get can't get air out. So they got air trapped in their lungs. So with it fully expanded and the lungs full of air, am I going to increase or decrease my technique? Decrease. Decrease it. I don't need a lot of KV because it's full of air. You guys see where I'm going with this? All right. So I gave you guys also a couple of examples here. One is osteoporosis and osteopetrosis. You guys know Harry Potter? It's an incantation. <coughs> Osteoporosis. <laughs> All right. Here's the difference between the two. Everybody knows what osteoporosis is, right? Brittle bone. Osteoporosis is loss of bone, bone density. Generally happens with females, more specifically aged females. Okay? So they start to lose bone density. All right? What color is bone supposed to look like? White. White. Do you see any white in here? This is the lumbar spine. It is a side view or lateral view of the lumbar spine. It's gray. It's gray. Well, I thought bone was white. Well, not here. In this case, because of loss of bone density, all the rays are going right through the lumbar spine and interacting with the film, causing it to be more gray. There is no bone density. Whereas on the other side, osteopetrosis, increased bone density, increased bone density. So there is too much bone. And because it's too much bone, very, very white. Okay? They're both destructive types of pathology. Not enough bone density, you can easily break, break your bone. <coughs> too much bone density is like china, china plates. They will chip and they will break. They are both destructive. So if this patient even fell down, they would break their bones as well. All right? Any questions? All right. I think that's the end of these slides, right? All right, let's go on to the next one. Any questions on what we just covered?